If you're not making, if you're making less than six or seven calls and less than six or seven text messages in a 30 day period, don't get internet leads, right? You're not going to be successful if you're doing less than 15 touches in 30 days. There's no point in doing it, right? Because that's the work it takes to convert internet leads right now. 2022 this is fresh data right and this yeah. coming our team with one specific project we did right we can we, we got 250,000 facebook leads this is one major campaign that we did right across about 24 months 250,000 facebook leads so are real buyers that will show up. We write letters for those. We're very specific in the letters that we write. So let's say it's Nick Baldwin. I'm going to write up the letter and it's going to say, hey, Mr. Seller, I've got a husband and a wife, Nick and Ann, and they're looking for the single family residence. It's in your neighborhood. I love it. All right, everybody. Welcome. Welcome back. Another great episode inside of Lab Code Agents. I've got my friend and business partner, Mark Rader, as a co-host. What's up? And I've got my other friend, Gus, on the other end. By the way, we've been using Power ISA for almost four years now, which is great. Been a while. And we, we're really happy with them. But today we want to talk to you about online leads, about leads in general, about conversion. And Gus, you're a great person to go to because you run Power ISA. And in essence, what we do is we rely on you to be able to, we rely on you to be able to convert our online leads and to nurture them. So Gus, welcome, Power ISA. Welcome to the show. Take it away, bud. Yeah, you know, thanks so much, Tristan. Appreciate the chance, you know, and yeah, it's been awesome working with you and your team as well. You know, you're in one of the most competitive markets in the in the country, right? You know, Southern California is not easy, uh, but uh, it's been awesome, you know, helping your teams blow up and grow uh, and do everything you guys are doing. Uh, it's amazing. And, you know, uh, we've been helping a lot of people, you know, with this whole conundrum of how do we convert these online leads, right? And the topic of today, why did that lead ghost you is what I, I want to dive deep into that problem. It's a big one, Tristan. And you know this, right? You know, people complain. It's probably one of the top three complaints that I that I hear when people are talking about online leads in general, in general, right? It's just, it's either I can't get them on the phone, right? No one responds to me. No one, I can't reach anybody. If they're, that's not the problem, I'm talking to everybody, but they're not converting. They don't want to meet with me. They're not, there's no motivation. They ghost me, right? Or yeah. I can't take them to the to that finish line, right? So it's uh, it's one of the top three complaints I always hear, and it takes different forms. The leads suck. Mm. They're terrible. Buyers are liars. Uh, you know, internet leads don't work, right? I, I see different forms. I don't know. You know, you have a team of agents, Tristan. I'm sure you've, you've probably heard it all at this point, and you have 150 thousand people in your group probably hear it all on a, on a daily basis. Uh, internet lead generation. Uh, take some effort, right? It's not it's not easy to do. It's not easy to do. And you know, you your team does it at one of the highest levels I've ever seen. Uh, the ISA obviously helps with that, right? Making sure you tighten it up, make it awesome. Uh, you know, we'll be talking a little bit more at the end. For folks that stick around to the end, we're going to have a pretty awesome giveaway related to today's topic. And we're going to be talking about a brand new offer we have. For those thinking about getting an ISA, you want to stick around to the end because we're going to announce a pretty awesome new offer. I'll go into detail on it. But, but the first things first, first things first, right? Converting these online internet leads, right? It's, it's definitely a challenge. We're, we're getting more and more leads generated, right? Every year, the amount of transactions stays about, you know, plus minus 10, 15%, but the amount of leads goes up and up and up. It's more challenging in 2022 to convert internet leads than it was two, three, four, five years ago. It's much more challenging, right? It's much more challenging. And one of the number one complaints that I hear is, yeah, Gus, you know, I, I, I reached out to this lead. We had a conversation. I qualified, I marked them as contacted, qualified them, right? And, and I thought we had something going there. They might have even agreed 
to do an appointment, Tristan, like a follow-up call or, or meeting up in the future. Hmm. And then you give them a call back a couple days later, the next week to follow up with them. And what happens, right? Yeah. Crickets, right? Hmm. People know how that feels. That can happen to you, right? People don't respond. They don't take, they don't respond to your text messages. They're not responding to your calls. And this really happens for folks that have been in contact with these leads, right? This can happen to you. It's part of this game. And, and they don't respond to your calls. They don't respond to your text messages. They're obviously no show at that appointment. And guess what, guys? You've been ghosted. You've been ghosted by that internet lead. They've turned unresponsive. They talked to you at one point. They were engaging with you. And then suddenly they shut off communication, right? And this really leaves a lot of agents kind of scratching their heads. I mean, Tristan, you're, you're, you're making it look like, oh, man, you're, you're, you're thinking about a lot of things. What do you think? Have you seen that on your team? Have yeah. You seen that on the you know, I'm thinking of reasons. I'm actually writing them down right now, the different reasons why people would ghost you. Absolutely. So, so far I've got number one is it. I think it's a combination of of, yeah. of of the agent and the consumer. But when it comes to the agent, um, number one reason is we don't reach out fast enough to be able to engage them while they're still looking. That's number one. The, one of the pet peeves I have is we get a lead and then somebody says, oh, yeah, 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 I'll reach out to them later today. Right. And I'm like, dude, they just came in. They're on the they're on the website right now. Get your ass on it. They're, they're probably <laughs> still on their phone. On yes, the website, right? that's number one. Number two is when we don't reach them, we instantly assume that they don't want to work with us. But the problem is that sometimes they need a lot of nurture because they come in at an initial stage where they're just looking. So number two. Number three is sometimes it's the consumer, right? And this is all for the most part outside of investors that are big investors, uh, this is an emotional decision. And our emotions as humans go up and down. And sometimes I want to buy, sometimes I don't. And this is a big investment. That's just where it is. But from what we can control, I'm writing it down. I'm thinking, yeah, exactly. Tristan, you, you just you just nailed that concept, right? There's some things in that equation we have no control over. I don't know what interest rates are going to be tomorrow. I don't know, you know, are we in a recession? Are we not? Maybe technically, yes. Technically, I am. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to tell you, Tristan, are we in a recession or not? I'm not smart enough to tell you what the interest rate is going to be in, in six months from. I have zero, zero control over those factors. What I want to talk about today in the context of can you avoid leads ghosting you is what can you control, right? What can you control? And, and, and I'm going to go, I'm going to try and do a good balance of getting tactical, like yeah. specific tips. And I want to do a good balance of stepping back and telling people why that's important, why that's something that you should be doing, right? So number one, you nailed it, Tristan. Why? Because you're Tristan, right? Speed to lead yeah. is something you can control. Speed to lead is important, right? You always want to catch that lead while they're still on the phone, right? That It's that first problem we talked about. Number one problem of converting internet leads is even talking to them, right? A lot of agents never solve that problem, Tristan. Like, I get all these leads. So I haven't gotten true. any. I haven't gotten any contact. I haven't talked to anybody. These this is these are terrible leads. And then and then obviously you can jump to the conclusion of well, Facebook doesn't work, or, or Google PPC doesn't work, or Realtor.com doesn't work, or Zillow.com doesn't work. I'm here to tell folks I have good news and bad news. The good news is those things work, right? The bad news is I'm sure they're not working for you. That's an issue. So one of the items you can control, speed to lead. And there's so many ways to solve this. One of them, the teams that do this at the highest level have ISAs that focus on speed to lead because that's their job, right? They're sitting down with the phone in front of them, with their, with their monitor in front of them, probably two monitors in front of them, making sure they reach out to those leads because the highest window conversion is going to be those first few minutes. It's, it's, it's a fact, guys. I'm, I'm going to tell you all the research and all the data it shows us you're going to bump up those conversion numbers if you make those calls. And the other thing that, that also helps with the ISA is that, great, sometimes agents are excellent, Tristan, in making that first call. They're really good. A lot of them are really good at that. That's true. That's but, true. But I when agree. you go to the second, third, or fourth, or fifth call, right, and we've measured this. If you're, not making, if you're making less than six or seven calls and less than six or seven text messages in a 30-day period, don't get internet leads, right? 
You're not going to be successful if you're doing less than 15 touches in 30 days. There's no point in doing it, right? Because that's the work it takes to convert internet leads right now, 2022. This is fresh data, right? And this yeah. coming, our team, with one specific project we did, right? We, can, we, we got 250,000 Facebook leads. This is one major campaign that we did, right? Across about 24 months, 250,000 Facebook leads. So I can tell you with a lot of authority that, that less than 15 touches, don't buy them, right? I can, I can tell you this. I have the data to back this up. Less than 15 touches, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Doing just one call and then expecting the text messages to do the work, it's not going to be enough, right? You're not going to convert enough of these folks. So that speed to lead is important. Speed to lead is step number one. But Tristan, speed to lead is table stakes. Like that's, that, that's like you should have something in place to help you respond right away to these leads, whether, whether it's CRM automation, whether it's a team of agents, maybe that'd be great to have a team of agents calling them Shark Tank style. <clears throat> ISA would be amazing, but find a solution. Find a solution because speed to lead matters. And it's one of those things that you actually have a lot of influence over whether you're able to do it or not, right? That's a good one. The second one, the second thing I want to talk about, and this is this is the big one. This is an interesting one. This is, you want to sit back, guys. Sit back, grab your pen and paper um, because it's a little bit about what you said about where the lead is at emotionally, emotionally. Where is the lead at? What's the psychology of some of these internet leads? I want to take, and this is where I'm going to take a little bit of a step back, right? Take, go away from the tactical, get into the strategic. What are we doing with these leads? And I'm going to focus a lot on Facebook, right? The challenge is similar to all kinds of internet leads, but it's particularly acute in Facebook. Why? Because you go on Facebook to look at pictures, you know, of your family, of your friends, of some artists. You, you, people go to Facebook to get the news sometimes, you know, it is what it is. A lot um, of the times. So. A lot of the times you get the news from Facebook and, and you know, people are on there and, and, they, and they, it's an interruption-based marketing system. They're stopping you from doing that other activity and showing you some homes. Oh, wow, yeah. that's interesting. Let me, let me stop my eternal scrolling and click on Tristan's ad. Let's see what's going on. I wonder what that's about. That's, that's an awesome property, right? Cool. What's that about? Boom, boom, boom. And you're sending all that information. It's an interruption-based marketing system. It's yeah. not Zillow.com. It's not realtor.com, right? Where you're on that website, probably to look for homes, probably there because you're interested in buying, renting, investing in real estate, right? So mm -hmm. Facebook is different from that in that sense, right? Interruption-based marketing. So what does that mean, right, to us? It means that a lot of these leads are going to be at the top of the funnel, a lot of them, right? A lot, and you are going to get transaction-ready leads to Facebook. I'm not saying you're not, but I measured this really carefully. In, in 250,000 at bats that we got, right? And we wow. were able to convert about 10 to 15% of those 250,000 wanted to talk to somebody right away. About 15%, let's go, let's go high, 15%, a high end of that, of that spectrum. 15% said, okay, cool, I like to talk to an agent, right? Let's, let's talk, let's see what they, because yeah, I'm interested in something. And there's something I want to learn that an agent can help me with, 15%. 85% weren't there, okay? 85, and maybe even up to 90% in some of these markets, 90% of those leads, they did not want to meet with you right now, okay? They, they, and, and you know what you said, Tristan, they might, it might be because they're, they're not that motivated yet. They might not be written. They're kind of iffy on it. Maybe yes, maybe no. But bottom line, for me, I like to think that they're too early in that process, okay? Too early in that process. Yeah. Really important to understand. They might not think, but, 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 and, and one of the things that, you know, that I've always told agents, and I've been saying this for the last few years, that your main job when you're talking to these leads for the first time, the main problem you have to solve is be valuable to them. That's the game. Okay. Especially in that first interaction, right? Because we can get caught up a little bit in qualifying them. Where do we fit on our pipeline? Are you top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel? Because I want those bottom of funnel. That's what I want, right? Yeah. It's very me focused. Like, what do I want out of this lead, right? And, and I'm saying, I'm not saying that's a, that's not important, but we have to qualify folks. But the lead can tell what we're doing, okay? And if all your questions and all your interactions mean that, are you ready to buy, right? What's your timeline? Have you have you talked to a mortgage broker yet? Tristan, if you're your way from making the deal happen, 
Have you talked to a mortgage broker yet? I mean, Hell no, not, dude. Right? It's not, it's not, it's not, that's not a relevant question for me, right? I mean, I might have calculated it on the Redfin app. like uh, oh, um, On the web. What, is it, what does this look times, like? Ten no, times, yeah. Right? But if I walk into my bank and talk to, like, you know, take a time out of my afternoon to, to talk to a mortgage broker because I have to do something next year, it's not real, right? It's not a real thing that's happening, okay? And, and so it's really important to understand because I suspect, Tristan, that sometimes these questions, our approach to these leads is telling them something. And it's telling them that if you don't fit in this box that I like, you're not that important to me, right? You're not that, let me set you up on a safe search and, and let me know, so this is important, right? Let me, I wanna, I'm gonna be checking in to see when you turn into what I want, right? I, I'm gonna be following up with you because I'm waiting for you to be yeah. 90 days out. And I'm going to follow up with you until I become 90 days out. Okay. And that is, and I'm not going to, I'm not criticizing people for doing that. Right. Cause I've done that. Tristan, when we started this in 2015, I could ask an internet lead five questions and I could convert them at a high level. Right. I think I kind of, I was looking for those transaction ready leads. We, when we started power, I say we mostly did Zillow and realtor.com 40% conversion to appointment. Right. Hell I could do that all day. That's a, that's a fun job. Right. Boom, boom, boom. Talking to those leads. If speed to lead is everything in that business, by the way, those portal type leads, that yep. it's all about getting to them first and getting them in front of the, in front of the house, right? For them. So those are, those are great. Those are amazing. You can convert a lot of folks that way, but this is 2022. Okay. Things have changed. Things have evolved. You've got a whole new group of more tech savvy consumers, right? You've got a whole generation of buyers that are coming up now. That are kind of, I don't, I don't want to say, well, allergic to sales, right? They don't want to be sold. They don't want to. And then th what, what does this mean to the agents? It means they don't want to meet with you right now. They don't want to engage with you because they're going to decide when they're ready. They're going to decide. They want that control. They, a lot of consumers, Tristan, wish that they could click a button and buy a home. Like, Dude, I, I do. Mm -hmm. I had like, I you know, everything else works with a button. Like, why can't I just pick a home on this app and like buy it? Like, click, click, click. What is this? Why are you calling me? Like, even calling me. Like, oh my God, that's such an aggression, right? What are you calling me for? And all these things, all these things, 100%. Well, Mark knows that. I hate leaving my house. I'm like, I don't want to. Uh, can you deliver <laughs> shit to my house? I have, to, I have to drag them out sometimes. I know. It's so true. So, well, I've had that set up behind you, like all the Marvel stuff. I probably I don't need to leave. There too. I'll probably hang out there too. So, you know, I have everything but, here. <laughs> that, that's what the consumer is, right? And that's and we can we can we can get mad about that. We can be upset about that. Oh, Generation Z, this millennials, that you know, we can we can do that. I think that's a lot of wasted energy. Again, I I don't control what the generations think or do, right? I, I'm, I'm I'm I'm. This is going to be part part therapy session for agents, guys. You don't control <laughs> that, right? We're changing the control. title, everyone. <laughs> We're changing the title. The therapy on internet leads, right? Why are they ghosting me? Oh my god. So, so that's what it means, right? <laughs> Here, here's a one minute story. This is probably the best advice I ever got uh, when I worked at Microsoft as an engineer from like a vice president, a really awesome guy. He said, the key to happiness, <laughs> the, you know, because this, this guy, vice president of Microsoft had worked as a camp counselor for years when he was a kid, right? Dude. And he had gotten like, learned a lot about psychology and talked to a lot of therapists because he was a counselor in his job, right? He worked with a lot of troubled youth. And he said, Gus, the key to happiness and the solution to all your problems is understanding these two, it would draw two circles, a small circle and a big circle. If you can understand this concept, you're going to be a happy person the rest of your life. He goes, this big circle, circle, the small thing is what you can control, right? The big circle is kind of everything else, okay? And the key to unhappiness is confusing the two, okay? The key to you being an unfulfilled, unhappy, not a great person is thinking those circles are the opposite. There's all these things you can control if you only try and get frustrated and do all this energy and hustle. And, 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 and there's a smaller piece. Oh yeah, that's stuff I can't control. No, it's, just, it's the opposite. So I think a great approach to life and business and real estate is focus on what you can control. There's a lot of noise out there, guys. It's a lot of noise of this and that and market, all these things. Um, um, focus on the things you can control and maximize those things that drive your business forward and you're, and you're, and you're going to do well. So those therapy session over, there we go. We're, we're, we're back to the, to the problem space, right? I love that. So, so making sure you understand where the, where these generations are at. 
because these Gen Z, millennial, even some of these, I'm, I'm barely a millennial, Chris, but I'm 41 and I'm like an old, like a super old millennial. I identify with a lot of these things. You do too, right? I don't know how you are, how old you are, but I don't think- I'm a boomer. I, I just turned 82. <laughs> yeah. silent, silent generation, right? So yeah. I, mean, I share a lot of the, even though I'm not a member of that generation, I share a lot of these beliefs. I share a lot of these values, right? When it comes to sales, for sure. As a consumer, as a consumer. But, but how do you deal with that, right? Well, well, how do you deal with that? What do you do? So it all goes back to the first, one of the first topics I mentioned. You've got one shot with a lot of these leads, right? You've got one opportunity. Make that opportunity count, right? And what I mean by that is understand where these Facebook leads are. Yep. Understand what they are, right? Because the biggest issue I feel, and this is my thesis, right? The biggest issue with getting ghosted by Facebook leads is a fundamental mismatch of the experience of the Facebook lead and your expectation as a real estate agent, okay? That's a big one. That's like a, let's clip that, right? Let's get Francis to clip that one. <laughs> it's a big one. So the, the biggest problem you're gonna find with leads not interacting with you, stop talking to you, not wanting to engage in this world right now, 2022, is that fundamentally you're not getting where they are. Their experience is mismatched with your expectations as a real estate agent, okay? That fundamental mismatch is, I feel, one of the biggest problems that we can control, Tristan. We have control over that, right? We can position our services to appeal even to these folks that are allergic to sales. They don't want to be sold to. No, 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 no. Don't reach out to me. Don't call me. Don't text. Don't do anything to me. I, I'm, I'm good. I just want to push the button and buy the home. That's what I want, Tristan. Why are you talking to me? Right? There's no point. Everything's online. Why aren't homes just bought with a button, right? And they sincerely believe that. Let me just tell you that. It's not a. I'm not exaggerating here, folks. They sincerely believe that the agent is like a. a, a there's like a button. That's what you do. You just get the. You just get the deal. Home bought, right? And they don't understand. They don't know what they don't know. I don't blame people for that. True. They just don't know what they don't know. They don't know what they know. So your interaction with them should be to attack that problem. They think they don't need you, right? You have one shot, one opportunity to tell them why they do, right? Why they do. And, what, and I've been talking about this for a long time. But one of the people that this last year, just really took the words out of my mouth. And I'm like, holy cow, this guy even said it better than me. Is this really awesome book by LCA Mod and friend of everybody, Barry Jenkins, right? Oh, Go ahead yeah. and check it out. I'm this book. I, I don't make anything from that. It's a good book. You should, you should, you should read it. It's a really good book. And, you know, and, and, there, and there's a few white local plugs in there. There are some few. There's a couple. I, I, I bear it. It's a fine little issue. But there's so much good nuggets in this book. And that, and I think he's wording it better than I have in the past, right? Barry is really good at communicating. He's a master communicator. And that's another, he, he reconfirmed a lot of these concepts that I had. He said, what if we approach these leads where they are, right? Why don't we meet them at the top of the funnel? What if we, why don't we assume they're at the top of the funnel, right? Oh, the book is called, it probably, it's probably looking backwards for you guys, Too Nice for Sales. I don't think I have the mirror turned on. It's called Too Nice for Sales by Barry Jenkins. Jake, if you could drop that in there, Too Nice for Sales. Uh, if you were, I've ordered this book for my, my whole company, guys, just so you know. Every single person in any kind of a staff leadership position has to read this book now in my company. Just, just so I'm not just saying it's a good book. No, like I've read that thing twice already and I'm getting my whole company to read it right now, right? Not an easy thing to do. A lot of these, a lot of these Gen Z people. Anyways, I will, we'll get That's that. true. Let me put up the link too. So yeah, people can drop, drop it. it yeah, it's on Amazon. You'll get it tomorrow through Amazon, right? For to, to most of the country. It's a it's a great book. It's a great book. And 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 he gets and he gets now we're, now we're gonna go back into the tactical, right? I laid out my grand scheme of why I think leads are ghosting you. What can you do about it now? That's the really important thing. We talked about speed to lead. Now we're talking about this. When you talk to that lead. Speed to lead, if you solve the speed to lead problem, you're going to get more at bats. What you do next matters a lot. That's the second problem you have to solve. Speed to lead, you've solved one problem. Great, good job. The second one is what do you say when you're talking to that lead, right? 
And the classical, what are you looking for? What's your time frame? You talk to a mortgage broker. Guys, things are changing. That doesn't apply as well as it did before. And I have the data to prove it to you guys. Because I, 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 for a long time, we, didn't, we never changed our Facebook script for the longest time. If you stay with that same approach, that same script, your conversion rate is going to go down. I've seen it happen. And I, I tried to scratch my head and go, what can we do here? And, and Barry came up with an awesome answer, right? And, and totally related to a lot of things I already believe. This guy, this, it spoke to me. This guy's right. This is an tr- absolutely true uh, approach. You have to engage with the lead where they're at and don't ask them questions to determine if they are a bottom of funnel lead, right? It'll work one out of 10. You're going to find that more bottom of funnel. I mean, that's awesome. Great. But the other 90%, you're probably going to lose, right? You're probably going to lose them. Don't do that, right? Don't, don't, don't play that way. So how can we do it? How can we position ourselves there? Number one, assume they're at the top of the funnel. I know you're just getting started here, right? I know that's a, that's a great way to start that conversation. No, you're just getting started. I just want to introduce myself and see if there are any questions about this process, right? I'm not asking how many beds, how many bats, how many square footage, right? That's a bottom of funnel question, okay? And one question that I, I you know, I don't want to say I stole it from Mary. I, I bought it from Mary. Let's just say that um, is what do you, what would you change about your current home, Okay. Because if you're a buyer, again, and then we just went through the pandemic, guys, right? So trust me that everyone in America knows exactly what they don't like about their home. They didn't know before. They, everyone knows down to like the, the, the square inch of something they would change in their own home. Barry recommends we ask that question, okay? What would you change about your current home, okay? It's another way of asking, what are you looking for, okay? But it's a very different approach. What would you change about your current home? Oh, that's interesting. Great, great, great. And, and, and when would you want to make that happen? And that, and that, and that could be way in the future. That's fine. Be, be not, don't pressure people, right? Don't, we, uh, what a part of our approach used to be when someone would give us a really long timeline, we'd go right after them, Tristan. We'd attack, that's an objection to handle. I'm a year out. Well, what's holding you back? Right? Like, buy now. Do the, you know, oh, that's when we would go right after folks. Yeah. That approach doesn't work as well anymore, right? The, the, it's another type of consumer. The consumer knows what we're doing, guys, right? They get bombarded with these conversations. <clears throat> Anytime they tell the web and these algorithms, right, that they're in slightly interested in buying a home, they get bombarded with these messages. <laughs> all the time, dude. All the time. It's on to us. It's like, you know, it's almost like this thing is listening to me, right? Zuck says no. I don't know. We'll see, right? But, but you know, it's almost like that. It's almost like that. And if we're not doing, if we're not speaking that we want to buy a home into our, into our um, phone, there's this thing called retargeting, guys, that if we are similar, sorry, not retargeting, look like audiences. If we are similar to someone that's buying a home, it's almost guessing what we're going to do. The, the algorithms are impressive. They are, right? But, but fundamentally, you need to understand that that motivation um, is going to be different at different times, like Tristan said. They might be a little bit hot right now, a little bit cooler the next day. They don't want to be pressured. They don't want to be pressured. But what they want is someone that can be valuable to them. And if you deliver a little bit of value and be, and be that customer service approach, right? You've got a much better chance of having a conversation with them, a solid conversation with them. And here's the biggest takeaway that I got from Barry's book. I'm giving it to you guys right now. You should read the book, but this is the best takeaway. Teach them something on that call. Teach them something they don't know, like that song goes, right? Teach them something that they don't know. Right? I didn't know you could dance, Gus. I was yeah, yeah sure. Look, I got my two fingers on you too. That's that, <laughs> that pretty good, dude. Got that move. You know, tell me, tell me something I don't know, right? Uh, teach them something they don't know that you know because you're in this market every single day, right? Make sure you teach them something. I'll give you a couple examples. And this, this goes back to a lot of the conversations I've had about providing value because I, w- I used to frame this in the way of you know, provide value when you're going to be, and they're going to more, be more likely to meet with you, right? Well, now I'm taking that even a step further. Provide, become a resource, teach them something, right? Show them that you're a consultant, that you're an expert at this, right? Because they, they're, if they're buying a home right now in 2022, they're concerned about interest rates. Yeah. That, I mean, that's just like normal. This is, I could talk to any buyer lead right now. And, I, and even if they don't say it, I know they're thinking about interest rates. The good news is if they're looking for homes right now, they might've already factored that in. But even if they have, I want to tell them, guess what, you know, a lot of people don't know this. 
But some of these sellers are willing to give concessions and buy down your interest rate. They can lower your payment for the life of the loan. Have you ever thought, I don't know if you knew that. Like, oh, I did not know that. That's interesting. And guess what, right? FHA, I just got a great deal for my VA, my FHA buyers. They're it's amazing kind of loans. They're great. They're awesome. They're also assumable, which is an amazing benefit of these government loans. You know about that. I did not know, right? Maybe a lot of agents didn't know <laughs> either, right? So, you know, yeah. the, the drop, you know, you got to have two or three or four or five of these atomic bombs of value, right? Ready to go in your arsenal. Get them, right? If you're in a USDA market, use USDA or VA or FHA or down payment assistance. Those offers are getting accepted in a lot of these markets. They weren't getting accepted six months ago. They are getting accepted now, guys, right? So it's really important to understand which ones of these value bombs you can deploy, value bombs, right? Uh, in this conversation, because you got to give them at least one, right? Drop a value bomb. And just kind of step back and see how they absorb that. Oh, wow, that's really interesting, right? That's Hey, can you send me more information about that? I'd love to send you more information about that, right? What's the best email for you? Great, that's awesome. And guess what? I'm teaching a class on whatever topic it is, guys, right? In a couple of weeks, would you like me to invite you to that? I can send you that invitation for sure. Great. Because when you do that, whatever event it is, I'm making this up right now, right? Because that's a great, I was the way I used to do. I would teach classes. As you can tell, I like to talk, right? So I used to teach classes to my audience, to my, to my sphere, my database. Even if I didn't, I would invite my internet leads. Why? Not because we're going to show up. Probably not gonna, it was an in-person class. To me. That was a long time ago. But it gave me a great excuse to call. Great excuse. Give them a call. Invite them to the event. Check in where they're at in their buyer life cycle, right? I always wanted to give her value first. Give them a reason to call. Check in, right? So that value formula, that teach them something they don't know formula will make the next call, the next text conversation much more likely to happen, folks, okay? It'll make it much more likely to happen. So how do, how do we then transition over to how Power ISA works with helping us stop getting ghosted. What's 100%. this, what, what's this it, whole new product? So, so we are, we're implementing this, these scripts, right? We're, we're trying to, so it's more about more than a sales approach. We're changing the whole company to be a customer service approach when it comes to these internet leads. It's very important to do that. And that mindset shift, instead of going, because going for the appointment, is not the goal with a lot of these leads. There's a percentage that will say yes, and this approach works with them too, right? The one, the, the one out of 10 that you can convert to an appointment, you're still gonna get that, Tristan. You're really gonna get that anyway, right? The one out of 10. Yep. It's just that nine out of 10, which is the difference in getting massive ROI, massive conversion from these leads, are just being very disappointed with the whole Facebook uh, experience, right? Yeah, that's the big too. difference. That is the massive change. That I think that's where the big meat, the big ROI, is not going to come from that one out of ten, right? It's going to come from everybody else. And changing your approach makes it much more likely that they're going to not ghost you. Take that next call. Take that next text message. And it doesn't stop there, right? You should have, and we're actually requiring this for a lot of our new campaigns a list of resources your ISA can drop on the next follow-up, the blog post. Hey, check out the top 10 new attractions in our area. Man, check out this review in our school district. Check it out. And guys, if this content doesn't exist for your area, make the content, right? Be that mayor of that town. I love that Gary V term. Be the mayor of your town and write that blog post and no one's writing. Record that YouTube video that no one's recording about the top high school in your area, right? The thing that buyers want to know about, right? That sellers want to know about because it's a, it's a selling point for their property. If that content doesn't exist, my, my thought, even better. You can own the content and drive those views into that content. The top, the best restaurants, the best bars, the best school, like a suburb, the best schools, the best parks, the best dog park. You have no, I'm a, I'm a dog owner. We're talking about Jacob. We're trading dog owner stories. 
there is a missing segment of content for real estate agents about the best dog parks and dog amenities in these neighborhoods, in these communities, the more urban communities, young professionals. They don't want to know about schools. They want to know about their pets, right? Create yep. the content. You know your market. You know what they want, right? I used to deal with a lot of the international community, folks moving to Seattle, Washington to work at Microsoft, Boeing, and everything. My, one of my biggest pieces of content and knowledge was knowledge of the immigration process. Tristan, do you want to buy a home as an immigrant? Uh, what nailed a good point. It, I nailed it with that kind of content, right? So understand your market, create that content because your ISA should be dropping these little seeds every single time they check in. If they don't get them on the phone, text them that, that link, for that awesome content. Email them the link, for that great content. They're going to go, damn, Tristan really knows this stuff. Holy cow. He knows exactly what I need. Why is he in my head? Why does he know what I want, right? Interesting. That guy, that, I should stay in touch with that guy. He's, he's, he, he owns this town. Holy cow. He knows the best bars, the best schools, the best That's pet true. parks, the best, all these things. So you want them thinking that. That is very different than a sales first approach. This is a content approach. This is a value driven approach. Value is that first. Is that how you've then trained your ISAs to be able to do this? Because I'm looking at the special deal that our team sent me. It says $500 off. Is that is that right? Is that what uh, I'm looking uh, 100%, at? 100%. 100%. That's part of our, our big offer. And this is what we're pointing them to. When it comes to internet lead conversion, internet lead follow-up, mm -hmm. if you want to get results in 2022, it's a lot closer to this than what we were doing back in 2015. It's a lot closer to that. That's where you want to be, right? And this, this is what we're using to make sure that our ISAs understand the market of today, right? So if you want to help solve that problem, an ISA can be a big piece of that. And a couple more tactical things I want to drop in. For the uncontacted leads, because like, oh, there's all these leads that go uncontacted. That's true. Even mm -hmm. a high-performing campaign will have 50% uncontacted. High-performing campaign, 50% will want to respond to you. Make sure you are utilizing everything you can to deliver some value to them. One of the best ways you've seen this year, it's blowing up like crazy, video text messages, introducing yourself to these leads. Very simple to do, automatable actually, right? Mm -hmm. Video text message. If you're not implementing video in your text message follow-up, do it, right? A lot of the platforms support it right now. Make it happen. You can make a generic video. You can send to everybody automatically. Or if you want to really take it next level, Make a personalized one for your leads. If you don't have a thousand leads coming in like Tristan, right? If you only have a smaller number of leads, then, then take the time to send a couple of those videos every day, two, three, four, five of those videos every day, right? It can be a 30 second video. And even, so that video text is so powerful, Tristan, even the agents that we work with that are cold prospecting, calling expired, FISBO, circle prospecting are using it, right? They're using that video text feature, right? to introduce themselves, to differentiate themselves a little bit from everybody else. And I'm doing a talk next week with our friends at Red X about the expired physical prospecting. We're going to have one of our clients on. He's killing it right now with his ISA. And so if you're interested in that topic, I'll see you next week. But, but, but it's a, it applies to the same kind of problem, converting those internet leads, converting those internet leads. Because as they say, right, when someone, when, a, when, a inter, when an internet buyer meets an agent, right, they're much more likely to work with them. And any consumer sits down with a real estate agent, 70% likely they're going to work with them, right? Just by getting in front of them. Well, if you can't physically get in front of them, the video text message is the next best thing. Video with them, right? Trying to form that relationship and set that expectation. Deliver value. What are you going to teach them in that text message? We should start changing our expectation on instead, what script am I going to, am I going to use with them, right? Birth to how and what am I going to teach them? That should be the question that we're asking 100% and that we're making sure that we're always asking ourselves when we're interacting with these leads. We're always doing it, always doing it, always doing it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Gustavo, what's, what's the best way for individuals who, who are interested, uh, want to contact you, sign up? What, what's, what's the best way to do it? That is www.powerisa.com slash LCA. Because we'll know that you're coming from LabCode agents and we can give you this special offer that we've got 
for LCA. We've never shared this offer massively at this level with LCA before, right? We're kicking it off today. We're going to be talking about it in the group later. You guys can drop a bunch of questions if you've got them. Um, that's a brand new offer for this community. We've had 50 of our clients go through this new model, and we are super excited with the results. And overall, the total cost of ownership of an ISA, full-time ISA, with this community is going to be less than half of what it used to be, we will expect, right? Less than half the total cost of ownership of having a full-time ISA experienced caller calling on your leads and helping drop that value, deliver this plan, deliver on the promise of doing things the right way and getting higher conversion rates, right? That's, awesome. that's a, an awesome offer there. That's an awesome one. And if folks have any questions, right? On, on, I think we got a question jumping in there from Denise. Uh, if folks have any, any questions, they can, you guys can email me at info. And this is, this is only for people that are watching this right now. This is only for people watching this. We're not introducing the group, but I'm going to post this anywhere. If you want to know what those scripts are, right? A couple of those questions, that new script we're delivering with these value-based questions inspired in this book, right? Drop me an email at info at powerisa.com. And I will send you that updated, renewed Facebook conversion script that has these new, this new approach, right? We, we learned it from the master. We went back and redid a lot of the work we'd already done approaching our Facebook leads. And I'd love to share that with you. Drop, oh, there we go. Thanks, Mark, for dropping that. Info at powerisa.com. And we'll be sending that out to folks. So if you're interested and you stayed all the way to the end, love these guys. You guys are gamers. You're troopers, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Stay at the end of the talk. I promise I deliver some massive value to you guys. Send us an email, info at powerisa.com. And we'll be sending you that updated script. Awesome. Gustavo, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. ISAs are massive and game changers. We use them. So awesome. a little biased over here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, Gustavo.